Welcome to worship. We're glad you're, we're so glad you're here and we're together this morning. Raise your hand if you know how to sail. You actually know how to sail. Nobody. Me either. A little bit. Oh, up there. They know how to sail up there. What do you say? Every weekend. And you, the same? Kind of. Well, I, I cannot raise my hand. I don't know how to sail. My, my two grandparents were in the Navy, uh, but I wouldn't qualify as a sailor. They would be uh, that way. I have been sailing. If you raise your hand, if you've been sailing, right? Okay. So some of us have been sailing. And I've been sailing twice in my life. One was when I was 12 years old. I was in Lake Erie with a buddy of mine and his dad. And his dad owned this big sailboat. And we went from Port Clinton to Putin Bay, stayed the night, and came back. But on the way back, I thought it was, we were going to sink this boat. We weren't. But I'd never been on a sailboat, and the wind was just blowing in Lake Erie, and the waves were white caps, and my buddy's dad was thrilled, because he grew up sailing on Long Island, on the ocean. And this is a typical day on the ocean of sailing. Uh, so this wind didn't bother him. He just knew how to harness the wind. Even though our boat was like this, our backs were almost in the water, it felt like. Uh, I was terrified. But then the second time, I was in, I was in upstate New York, and I learned how to sail, a little sunfish sailboat, and it was the coolest thing ever to kind of figure out how to move that sail to harness the wind, and that boat just took off, and then move it around and turn that little boat. The reason I sail is because uh, we can't control the wind. Uh, the wind's going to blow where it wants to blow, how strong, how soft, it doesn't matter. I can't, nobody can control the wind, but we can control our response to the wind. Sailors understand how to respond to the wind and put the sail in the appropriate place to make the ship or the boat go forward. And that's their response in the midst of adversity, that is, the strong wind. Today we're talking about adjusting to things beyond our control. We're going to look at Psalm 131 and also the last day of Jesus' life as we look at, examine the reality that we all are in at almost sometimes weekly uh, globally, there's things beyond our control that, that give us a lot of anxiety. And sometimes there's personal things in our lives that are beyond our control that give us anxiety. But there's things we can learn from the people before us, Psalm 131, and Jesus himself about how to navigate, how to respond to those things beyond our control and do it in a grace-filled, centered way. All right, let's stand as we sing together. I will sing forever of your love come down With my hands to heaven shout your praises loud I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out I will sing forever of your love come down I once was blind, I could not see. Chains of sin had shackled me. But God in heaven heard my plea. Cause Jesus, Jesus rescued me. Oh, Jesus, Jesus rescued me. I will sing forever of your love come down. With my hands to heaven, shout your praise. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I will sing forever of your love come down. Oh, 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 it floods my soul, and hope eternal won't let go. My dead erase at Calvary, cause Jesus, Jesus rescued me. Oh, Jesus, Jesus rescued me. I will sing forever of your love come down. With my hands to heaven, shout your praises aloud. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me. I will sing forever of your love come down. Oh, 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 o
Well, there's a home beyond the sky, a song we'll sing for all of time. The grave is empty, I am free, cause Jesus, Jesus rescued me. Oh, Jesus, Jesus rescued me. I will sing forever of your love come down with my hands to heaven. Shout your praises aloud. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I will sing forever of your love come down. I will sing forever of your love come down with my hands to heaven. Shout your praises aloud. I was lost. about adjusting to things beyond your control is making sure you've got enough band members on a holiday weekend. But uh, God provides, we trust in him, and he has provided, give us the technology to lead worship well, and we're glad that you're here, can make music with us, and, um, you know, just a, it's a good reminder that Christ, you know, uh, we can't always control things, but in Christ, he always provides what we need, and he is always enough. Let's sing about that. Don't turn. 
of grace and peace. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to always believe and trust in you. You hold it all things together. We ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a, uh, please be seated and we invite the children forward for a special message. Here. Come on down and let's sit in these seats right there. Sit right there. That would be fantastic. Hey, guys. Here we got one more. All right, all right, all right. So, hi. Hi, good morning. You said bye? Yeah. Are you leaving? Yeah. You want me to leave? I'm attending. All right, cool. I'm glad you're attending. So, here's the thing. It, was it raining in, outside when you came in? No, it wasn't. Oh, okay, that's good. But it was raining maybe this morning. Have you ever been in, a, been in the rain when it's just like raining really hard and it's just you get soaked? Have you ever gotten mad at the rain? And you go, rain, why don't you stop rain? I said that. You have said that? Yeah. Me too. I said that. You do that too? Does the rain ever stop if you say that? No. no, I can't control the rain, even though I might go, ah. Rain, I'm getting wet. The rain just keeps raining. Yeah. Exactly. So the only thing we can do when it's raining is we can do a couple things. Well, a few things. Not go out in the rain, right? Or we can put on a raincoat. You could put, that's exactly, you're reading my mind. I was going to say, we would put up an umbrella. Right. Or you can run in the rain and see if you can beat the raindrops. But you can't. I've tried. Or you can play in the rain. Maybe your mom and dad say, you know what, let's go out and play in the rain. Because sometimes rain feels good. If it's really been hot and you want to go outside in your yard and it's raining, <gasps> ah, and you run around and you run in circles, it's just fun to be in the rain sometimes. Because you can always dry off, right? So we can't control the rain, but can we, can, we can't control how we, we respond to the rain. Would that be true? Yeah. Exactly. If it's sprinkling, you can do that too. And this is the life. life it's not life for, even for you. There are things that, like you in your house, you can't control. But you have a mom and dad who love you, who take care of you, Right? And they'll make sure you, you have everything you need. That's what they do. They make sure you have everything you need. And God says, as my children, there is so much around you in your life as you grow up that's going to be so much beyond your control, like the rain, but God says, I will take care of you every single moment of the day. I got, God, I take, God loves you as, a, as his child. Just as your mom and dad love you, God loves you even more. And that's the cool thing. What are you going to say?
Yeah, if it's lightning and thunder outside, you don't want to be outside sometimes. Especially, you, don't, you just want to be inside where it's nice and safe, right? And lots of times your mom and dad will say, hey, let's come inside where it's safe because they're taking care of you when it's thunder and lightning outside. And that's what God does to us too. He says, let me just take care of you. Trust me, and I'll make sure you're going to be taken care of, okay? When you grow up, even today, and as you grow up all through your life, God's going to make sure you're taken care of. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for the gift of your promises and the gift of your presence. And we pray for these young boys and girls. They might continually be nurtured and trust with you. In Christ's name, amen. Thanks for coming up. Thank you. Have a good day. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Morning. I'm Paul. Uh, I'm going to be reading our lessons this morning. Please feel free to follow along in your Bibles, or you can use our beautiful new screens on either side of me. Uh, this morning, uh, first off, we'll be reading responsively from Psalm 131. My heart is not proud, Lord, and my eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. But I have calmed and quieted myself. I am like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I'm content. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, both now and forever. Second lesson today comes from the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. The sun is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to recon reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross." Once you were alienated from God and were enemies of your minds because of your evil behavior. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith established and firm and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Our gospel lesson this morning is from St. Luke, chapter 22, verses 63 through 71. The men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and demanded, prophesy, who hit you? And they said many other insulting things to him. At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, met together, and Jesus was led before them. If you are the Messiah, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I asked you, you wouldn't answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. They all asked, are you then the Son of God? He replied, you say that I am. Then they said, why do we need more testimony? 
We've heard it from his own lips. The gospel of the Lord. So what is this morning beyond your control? You say, well, everything, Pastor Mike. Uh, yes, there's a lot of things that are beyond our control globally. But sometimes in our personal lives, there are things that cause us a lot of anxiety or worry or um, difficulty. And we get lost. It's a human nature to get lost in things beyond our control. And it causes sleepless nights, anxiety, sometimes depression as well. For us, uh, my wife and I, what hits close to home for us, my wife, in, on just over a week, has having surgery, and so that's a little bit, that's beyond our control. It's in the control and the hands of medical professionals we trust, uh, but then that's even, I mean, outcomes sometimes are beyond control as well. So we're trusting in them, but also trusting in God, but that's the reality of where we find ourselves for our family, but you probably have something as well that is beyond your control, that potentially is causing some difficulty, some nervousness, some worry, anxiety, and as I said, even depression. Psalm 131 is a perfect psalm for understanding how to adjust to things that are beyond our control. It's a beautiful psalm of three verses as, uh, that talks about hope. And it gives us a beautiful picture of what hope looks like. We'll get to that in a second. But we are in this series, we're finishing up today, of these psalms for ordinary life. And these are psalms that the Israelites, even Jesus and his family, sang as in the first century as they made pilgrimage from their town, ascending to Jerusalem. And there are 14 psalms in the book of Psalms called the Psalms of Ascent, and we're calling them Psalms of Ordinary Life. And the ordinary life today is adjusting to things beyond our control. Psalm 131 begins this way. Uh, Paul read it, but let me read it again. Um, it says, My heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. Now, we might pause there and say, what are the great matters and things too wonderful for me? And there's two ways of looking at that. Looking at that. One is about ambition. You know, even the psalmist says, my heart's not proud. And so the psalmist is saying, look, it's about Part of it is thinking greater of myself than I should think. That I can accomplish more than I really probably could accomplish. And it's making, it's beyond my control, the outcome of this or that thing. And it's causing me anxiety. That's one way. Because I'm puffed up with pride. That's beyond me. But the other way of looking at it, because the psalm is directly rooted in the reality of hope is this beyond our control because I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me or that is things that are beyond me that I cannot even have any influence over. And that's where we're going to land today. And Psalm, the verse, second verse leads us into deeper hope. It gives us a picture of what this looks like. I have calmed and quieted myself. Other translation says I've calmed and quieted my soul. So the deeper sense of contentment in the midst of the swirling uncertainty. There's a deeper contentment. I've calmed and quieted my soul or myself. I am like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. That is a weaned child and with its mother, with her mother. I reason, uh, I know that is because where I got this picture, I typed in weaned child this picture came up, and I went, yep, that's a weaned child with, his, with her mother. Now, how do we know that? You know what to wean off something is? Like we wean off medications, or we wean off something. That is, we're distancing ourselves from complete dependence upon. Children are weaned from their parents, and that's the natural progression of maturity. This is good. We do not want an 18-year-old, 19-year-old completely clinging to mom and dad every day. That'd be terrible. It'd be, we would, if, if our boys would do that, we've not done our job as a parent because it sows independence when we wean, in, wean children off their parents. Well, the psalmist says hope is pictured this way. 
Now, this weaned child, this daughter of this mom, she's not completely independent and separate from her mom. There's a connection happening there, right? She is, somewhat, she is still dependent on her mom. But she's now starting to make decisions on her own. And, and able to calm herself down. As an infant, she can't do that. She needs mom or dad to come and pick her up and help calm her down. But as she's growing in years, she can now enter situations that upset her and now can feel like, okay, I can, I can calm myself even though I might need a hug for my mom. It's a loving connection of contentment with her mom. And the psalmist says, this is the picture of what hope looks like. What, in the midst of the storms of life, where things are adverse, or we get worried or anxious about, we trust that there's one bigger than us in our own household. Like she doesn't have to bring home the income for her family. Her mom does, or her dad does. She doesn't go to the grocery store, mom or dad do. She doesn't drive to the hospital, mom or dad do, because mom and dad are there to take care of her. And the psalmist says, that's our relationship with the God who loves us. We have hope because, yes, we make decisions and we can calm ourselves, but we can calm ourselves because we know there's one who loves us, who takes care of us in the midst of the swirling uncertainty all around us. Martin Luther uh, had a number of troubles throughout his life. He was an intense man of faith who uh, led the Reformation of the church, as we all know, uh, wrote extensively on, and studied the scriptures, but did not, did, that did not uh, take him away from suffering. He lost a child at one point, a daughter. He suffered from physical ailments to the, to the very end of his life. He suffered loneliness and isolation and, 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 and depression throughout his life. Um, there was one point later in his life he told his wife, Katie, I'm done. I want to be finished with my life. And he was really brutal, brutally honest with the struggles he faced. While that was true, and this, that is, the physical ailments and the depression and the isolation and loneliness, and he experienced that isolation and loneliness particularly for a year as he spent time at Wartburg Castle. He was being protected by the prince from the religious authorities who were out literally to kill him. But he spent the entire year by himself, and it was incredibly painful. He writes about it. He writes to his friends that year how isolated and lonely he felt. It was beyond his control to leave that place. And he, matter of fact, in those days, he would say the devil was tormenting him, and there's a famous thing where he took some ink, an inkwell, and threw it against the wall as if he was throwing it against the devil. He was trying every day to adjust to things beyond his control. And people then would write to him later on in his life about difficulties they were facing. And there's all these letters that we still have. And Jerome was one person. We don't know who Jerome was, but it was a person who wrote to Luther about some difficulties he was facing beyond his control. And Luther's advice was this. Jerome, be of good courage and cast these dreadful thoughts out of your mind. Whenever the devil pesters you with these thoughts at once, at once, seek out the company of men, drink more, joke and jest, or engage in some other form of merriment. Now, he's not telling Jerome to pretend it doesn't exist. But what is he saying? Don't stay by yourself. It will, you will descend deeper in the darkness. But Jerome, go find your friends. Joke around. Because God loves you. And you can't make that control the situation, but you can tend control your response. Now, drink more doesn't mean he's going to go escape into alcohol. That's not Luther's point. But that's part of an entire picture that says, go find some enjoyment. Go do something. Get out. Luther even said this. When he felt the most depressed that was beyond him, he would go out to feed his pigs. So Luther's advice was, spend some time with your pigs or with your friends. It doesn't matter. Just go, get out and do something. But early on in his life, and this is where we get to Jesus. When Luther was at the monastery, he was racked with, with shame, guilt, 
anxiety, and so many things beyond him. He would daily, and sometimes multiple times during the day, go to his confessor. That is, somebody he would confess his sins to. It was somebody above him. And that guy, whose name was Johann von Staupitz. And von Staupitz would always give Luther the same piece of advice, and it's this. Look to the wounds of Christ. Luther, look to the wounds of Christ. Luther, look to the wounds of Christ. And why would John von Staupitz say this? Why would he say, Luther, in the midst of your anxiety, your depression, your shame, your getting lost in things you can't control, why would he say, now focus here? Because this is the one, Jesus, who did the same thing. Here's the beautiful thing of Jesus. I love Jesus for so many reasons. But if you and I would just spend and meditate on Jesus' last day of his crucifixion and take these words to heart, we would find one who entered a day beyond his control and yet remained controlled. The one who stilled the storm, do you think he was still in his own storm? Yes or no? Look, on that last day, we read it. He was being led places. He was being blindfolded. He was being spit upon and mocked. He was being questioned. He spent a sleepless night in jail as an innocent man. There are so many. He was led. He was forced to carry his cross. He was led to his place of his death. He did not put the nails in his own hand or his feet. They put that in him for him without his choosing. The one, as Paul writes, and Paul read this from Colossians, there's this beautiful, I love Colossians, and Colossians says this, Paul says, all things were created for Jesus Christ, and in him all things hold together. Now that's Paul's words following the resurrection. But here's the irony of Jesus' last day. The one who holds all things together entered a time where it felt like things were not all together. The one who does not, as the prophets say, does not willingly afflict us was willingly afflicted for us. He placed himself in a vulnerable position that he was not in control of for our sake. So if Jesus can enter his last day stilled in his own storm, it behooves us to follow Staupitz's advice as he gave to Luther, he gives to us. Look at the wounds of Christ. And let that be the center. How did Jesus get through that day? Because he knew his God, the Father, was not going to let him down. He knew that this was part of a larger story being told. The one who writes our lives in a book allowed his life to be written on a day. It's beautiful. He knew God the Father had a resurrection three days from now, which could allow him to, in his soul, be calmed, even though it wasn't calm outside. His soul could be calmed because he knew the promise was certain. He could depend on it. God the Father is not going to let him down. And so we can move in this moment of deep difficulty and pain with courage and hope, centered not on this, but centered on this, in deep inside. And you say, well, Pastor Mike, that's Jesus. I know. But as followers of Jesus, and that we're in our baptism by the Holy Spirit, God, Jesus places himself in us. So his life is now in our lives. So that when we face our own storms and uncertainties and all this stuff and depression and just darkness, be personal lives or globally, that we go, this is craziness. But I know there's one deep in me who lives in me, who is still the calm part of my being, my soul. 
And we can echo the psalmist by saying, I've stilled and quieted my soul because there's one bigger than this moment that loves me, who takes care of me, and sees me through it. So I don't need to focus here, I focus here. And that pulls me through a difficult day. Even Jesus, on the res- after the resurrection, Jesus says, I just read this this morning, at the end of Luke's gospel, it says that the disciples were upset because of Jesus' crucifixion. They're worried and anxious and doubtful. And Jesus shows up in their midst as a resurrected one and says this, Why are your hearts troubled and why do doubts arise in you? Jesus said. And he said, then he says this to the disciples, Look at my hands and my feet. So before Stoutbitz said this, Jesus himself centered to his disciples as they were going through difficulty by saying, look at my wounds, my hands and my feet. Then in words, if God could raise Jesus from the dead, that changes everything. Everything. It changes the way my wife and I approach her surgery. Because God's bigger than that. And God will never let us down. Ever, ever, ever. And we can bank on it. And here's the thing. As you take this gift today, it's a gift, the body and blood of Jesus. It's a way to look on the wounds of Christ again. It's a way to take in now the promise again. It's a way to taste and see that the Lord is indeed good. It's a way to experience the love of God fully embodied in yourself because he's given himself to us again. This is his wounds we're looking on, his body and blood. And lastly, this. This is from the book uh, Companions in the Darkness. Diane Groover, I encourage you to read it. It's a great book. It uh, just came out this year. And Diane Groover says this about uh, that phrase, look to the wounds of Christ. Look to the wounds of Christ, she writes, for this is where we see the extent of God's love. The upside-down way he brings beauty and wholeness, the full measure of his grace. It is where we are reminded of truth outside of our feelings, that nothing can separate us from God's love, not even the deepest depression. Look, we can't control things, but can we, we can control our response to things. And our response is out of, first and foremost, the hope that we hang on to, cling to the promises of God. Let's pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for your love that's found us, your love that's here, the people you surround us with, reminders and visible evidences of your love for us. We thank you for your body and blood, your bread and wine that you give us, another example, another reality that we ingest of your love for us. And so we pray that you would still and calm our souls with this hope, with this peace that passes understanding. In Christ's name, amen. As we look to the wounds of Christ, we look to these gifts of bread and wine. We're reminded that on the night of Jesus' betrayal, our Lord took bread, gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray as the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and feast on this gift. Uh, so communion is coming forward and receiving the bread and then the wine. The way we're going to, uh, the way we do it is this center section will come forward first, and then the ushers will move to the outer sections, and you'll come forward after that. Okay, please come. The feast is prepared.
And there I find you in the mystery In oceans deep My faith will stand And I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise so we'll rest in your embrace for I am yours and you are mine the grace about the deepest one Sovereign hand will be my God. Where feet fail, fear surrounds me. You never fail, and you won't start now. And I will call upon your name.
keep my eyes above the waves. My soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. At the end of each petition, my friends, uh, we'll pray together by responding to Lord in your mercy, and your response will be, hear our prayer. Holy One, you bring your people in together in worship, enliven your church, guide evangelists, preachers, prophets, and missionaries who seek to share your love through word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show no partiality, Lord. Increase justice in all nations. Encourage leaders and governments to work with one another for the good of our common world. Unite our country in seeking the health, safety, and dignity of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You accompany those in most need. Shelter all fleeing violence or persecution in Afghanistan. Protect any who are in danger and sustain them through uncertain and unstable times. We pray especially for those in Louisiana, New York, New Jersey, and other parts of the South and East as they recover from their hurricane. We also pray for the firefighters out West battling the fires. Sustain their efforts with the strength that only you can provide. Help them endure and persevere and send relief to tired hearts, minds, and bodies. We pray also for Scott Bear, Doug Rose, Aunt Ruth, Ava Egel, Justin Baker, Jeff Cox, Julie Danner, Calvin Dawson, Carol Ebersall, Nancy Himmer, Christy Jones, Gladys and Joe Krellick, Tessia Moore, Princess Roberts, and Darcy Weaver. We pray for family and friends of Dawn Daniels, the family and friends of Ronnie Butch Murray, and the family and friends of Dennis Winterstein. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Just a couple announcements before we uh, finish our time together and in worship. We're so happy that we can be together. In your bulletin, there's a connection card. If you could fill it out, and on the back of it is ways for you to participate in the life of this congregation at St. Luke. Um, Here's a few ways to highlight. First is dinner for six. Dinner for six is a chance for six people from this church, you and four or five new friends uh, from here to get connected, to have dinner three times over a course of six weeks. And we should invite you to, and, and to participate in that. It's a great way uh, to be connected in an even deeper way to uh, do so. Um, just sign up on the back of the connection card or there's a link on the email newsletter and even on our website for you to um, sign yourself either as a couple or as, or as an individual and we'll tell you which group you're part of uh, in a couple weeks. So take advantage of that. Um, St. Luke's Kids is moving, drumroll, to Thursdays. And Alicia Artis is here to give us some exciting details about that. Alicia. Good morning, church family. Are you guys awake? Do I need to say it again? Good morning, church family. Yay. Hey, guys. I just wanted to share a couple of announcements, updates on what's going on with St. Luke Kids and um, for the children and family here. Um, so next Sunday, we are having a carnival event. And I'm going to say it's a carnival-themed event because I don't want people showing up and thinking there's going to be like a whole bunch of rides and stuff. So it's a carnival themed event. So we're going to have some activities, um, some snack foods. And I didn't mention in the first service, but we are going to have the donut truck here. Donna's Delicious Dozen. Woo! Yes. <sighs> yeah. So um, she'll be here. 
with some awesome donuts. So everyone is welcome. And it's going to be kind of the kickoff to our big Thursday event the same week, September 16th. We are having our St. Luke Kids uh, midweek experience. I keep calling it an experience because it is going to be an experience for the kids here at St. Luke. We are super excited. It is new. So we appreciate all the prayers and patience as we go through this. But it's going to be awesome. And as I was listening to Pastor Mike's sermon, I did listen to your sermon today. I did. Yeah, so as I was listening to the sermon today and talking about how there are things that we can control and there's things beyond our control, as I'm planning for this event, there's a lot of things that I control. But there's some things that I can't. But I know God's going to be there and God's going to provide. He's going to provide us with the volunteers. And we are needing volunteers for both events, both for the carnival and for the Thursday experience. But God's going to do it for us. So I'm excited. If you have any questions, please connect with me. There is a display out in the lobby. It gets, it's mobile because it keeps moving between the services. But there is some information there. I know it's in the newsletter, um, our church website, Facebook page. Um, so bring on the prayers. This is going to be awesome. It's been a long time, and we're going to welcome the families back. So thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Cool. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. What's that? So volunteer, exactly. So volunteer. Hey, two more quick announcements. One is uh, the kit assembly for school and health kits will be Saturday, December, or September 25th from 9 to 11. Um, sign up on the back of the connection card if you can help with that kit assembly. Uh, Hurricane Ida, as we all know, uh, did immense damage to Louisiana and the East Coast. And the ELCA disaster response has responded among other agencies as well. Um, but if you want to help with the disaster response, you can do so either by donations online. If you go to elca.org slash disaster, or there's a out on that desk as you leave, there's a flyer that looks like this. It gives, it gives you information about what Lutheran Disaster Relief is doing, response is doing. There's a way for you to send a check if you still want to do that. Um, that's you can do that here. Uh, you can also donate online as well. And there might be opportunities to send people to help. Um, there's an email. If you dig a little deeper into, there's a Louisiana person in Louisiana that's coordinating some uh, help. So if you want to lead a team, maybe of friends or your life group from here to take a few days to go to Louisiana or maybe even the East Coast to help with the relief efforts. I know people did that with Katrina. Um, feel free to do so. And there's ways for you to get connected to Lutheran Disaster Relief, who's organizing those teams, okay? Um, that's it. And then we have a congregation meeting, annual meeting, September 19th at 2 p.m. on Zoom. It's an open meeting where members of the church can bring forward topics, questions, or proposals for discussion and vote if necessary. Those the announcements. I need to zip out of here because I have to get to the 11 o'clock service, but I don't want you to zip out of here. Hang out for a second, as, as Aaron would say at the end. And get to know somebody and say hi to them. We're here, here together in, as a congregation. And so we're so happy that we can be together. So um, please rise as you receive the Lord's blessing. My friends, may the Holy Spirit fill you completely, renew your minds, and lead you deeper into the purpose God has in mind for you today and this week. Amen. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. All your ways are good. All your ways are sure. I will trust.
serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. Yeah, I will follow you. To the world, I do my life. I will live for you alone. You're the one I see, knowing I will find all I need in you alone. In you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Whom you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Whom you love, I'll As Pastor Steve said, we don't want you to rush out. We'd love for you to linger, hang out a little bit. And as another sign of, of things returning, um, life coming back into the church, our preschool resumes this week. And so if you're able, as you're, as you're chatting with one another to help stack a, f- a chair or two, we certainly would appreciate that. But may, you, may God's blessing be upon you this week. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful week.